thought I could film the jumper, but it's way too hot. Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing well. Today I'm coming at you from a different location. It's a little bit sunnier over here because in today's video, I'm going to be talking about all of the physical books that I have on my TBR shelves. I'm planning this to be like a little mini series of bookshelf tours so the next one will be my red shelves and yeah i'm just going to talk about some of the books on here as you can see we have like three shelves i'll insert a better clip um i've recently color coordinated them all again i think they're looking really really nice i'm not sure exactly how many books are on here it's quite a few i've seen a lot of people doing these kind of videos recently like tbr trolley tours and stuff i don't have a trolley i just have these three shelves but i'm excited to talk to you about the books that are on them so i've brought you a little bit closer so let's just kind of work our way through the first two books that come in like before the white section just because they're so multicolored, i did not know where to put them we've got mr love man by bernardine everisto which i recently hauled in my what i got for my birthday and then here comes the sun by nicole dennis ben which i got for christmas actually i've never heard anyone talk about this but she is the author of patsy which a lot of people seem to love and i also do want to read patsy but this one just sounded like really really up my street so I opted to start with this one. Then I have 26A by Diana Evans. I was actually gonna read this in January, like I picked it up, I posted about it on Instagram, and then I just didn't read it for some reason. I absolutely loved Ordinary People by Diana Evans. It just really made me wanna pick up her debut, and it's super short, and it's about twins, so I must get to this one soon. We've then got The Girls by Emma Klein, very popular book with a lot of people. I talked about that one recently as well. I then have To Kill a Mockingbird, so I don't know if I've read this book or not, I usually have such a good memory for books and I don't think I read this, but like everyone in my family is like convinced that I did read it when I was younger. I actually bought this for Alex. This is a secondhand copy when I made him like a reading list for Christmas a few years ago. We'd recently both read In Cold Blood by Truman Capote and then watched one of the Truman Capote films, which Harper Lee is in. And I just thought he'd be quite interested to read it. I actually really do want to read slash reread this. So that is why it's chilling on my TBR. I then have Lord Edgware Dies by Agatha Christie. This is the next book that I need to read for my Poirot project where I read one Poirot book every month in 2021. So this is going to be February's book actually, so I'll be picking this up soon. I have The Sympathizer by Viet Tang Nguyen, which I talked about in my all the big books on my TBR video, which I'll link below. I also talked about Any Human Heart by William Boyd in that video. I have How To Be Both by Ali Smith. This was kindly sent to me by Kieran from KD Books, but he hates Ali Smith and he hates this book and then CJ and Kieran did like a buddy read of it and CJ hated it as well so I want to read it I guess but I also kind of don't because I've only ever heard bad things so maybe if you really like this book I would like to try some Ali Smith but maybe if you really like how can you both let me know because at the minute I'm not getting much encouragement from anyone to read it apart from saying read this terrible book. I have Olive Kitteridge by Elizabeth Strout so I picked this up in part because a lot of people who I know absolutely love it. Like my mum really liked it, my uncle absolutely loved it. People I work with love Elizabeth Strout. I've never read anything by her, but also this one, the Pulitzer. And I am doing like a mini, I say this, Pulitzer project where basically I realised I loved two of the previous Pulitzer Prize winners. So I thought I picked this up second hand. I think it's going to be quite sad, which is potentially why I haven't picked it up. I have Pine by Frances Toon, which is like a gothic halloweeny sort of like mystery story set in the scottish highlands i got this book like right around halloween and i was gonna try and like fit it into my october tbr it seemed like a really good time to like read it when it was feeling like spooky and so now i'm tempted to just like save it till this halloween or at least this autumn but i've heard actually really good things about this it was all over bookstagram like last halloween this is a strange one so this is oreo by fran ross and i got this book free in like a newsletter like i was subscribed to the pool and you got like a little gift every month obviously the pool doesn't exist anymore and it was this one month which is about a girl who is born to a jewish father and a black mother i think and about her not fitting in like the idea of like oreo it was published in the 1970s and um, it's like a this is a picador modern classics version and so i've just kept it around because it sounded really really interesting i think because of it's like very white very plain spine I always just sort of like forget that it's there, so I do need to read this one soon. Then I have Eight Detectives, which I just recently hauled for my birthday. I have The Ministry of Utmost Happiness by Arundhati Roy. I picked this up secondhand. I still really want to read it. I'm keen to read more books set in India, but I've heard a lot of people say that The God of Small Things is a better place to start, which I think is why I've been kind of like sitting on it a bit. Definitely, if you've read kind of like one or both of Arundhati Roy's books, please do let me know because I want to know if 
that information is true if I would be fine starting here. Then I have my two Donna Tarts. The less said about that, the better. I also talk about those in my big books video. I have Strange Hotel by Ema McBride, which again, I am quite interested in this. I picked this up like free via work, but I really want to read a girl is a half formed thing by this author first. I think that would be a better indicator of if I like her style, this one is less interesting to me than that. That reminds me by Derek Awusu. This is a book that I'm kind of putting off because I think I'm really, really gonna love it. Hannah from Let's Talk About Books Baby loves it. Simon loved it from Savage Reads. It's not even long. It's like a piece of auto fiction about a young black boy growing up in care. And yeah, I think it's gonna be like a really special one. So I just need to stop putting it off. Then we've got The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr., which I hauled recently and talked about. A lot of these books obviously are the books that I just got for my birthday, so I don't want to repeat myself. I will link that hole below. But same for Memorial by Brian Washington. The Offing by Ben Myers, one I've been meaning to pick up for ages. I almost read this in December and then decided it was more of like a summery read, but I am going to force myself to read it this summer because I think I'm absolutely going to love it. This is a really cool proof that I got recently. Um, it's called it's called The Stranding by Kate Sawyer. It sounds like kind of not my thing, um, a bit like post-apocalyptic about a woman living in the mouth of a whale. Like that kind of does scare me, but equally I think this proof is like so stunning. I might wait until like this comes out. It's due out in June. Wait and read some reviews and see if like based on other people, if it sounds like it's gonna be my kind of thing. Writers and Lovers by Lily King and if I had your face by Frances Cha, I just got for my birthday. And I have The Dilemma by BA Paris. I picked this up like super cheap secondhand just for Christmas in our local like market. I think I was just in the midst of lockdown, unable to buy books, wanted to buy a book. This is just like a psychological thriller. It does sound interesting, but it's one of those where I'm like struggling to imagine at what point I'll pick it up because there's so much other stuff, even when it comes to thrillers. On my TBR, I feel like if you've read this, please let me know if it's like amazing. Cause otherwise I think it could possibly lament on my shelves for a while. This is a proof that I got recently that I'm really excited about. It's called The Startup Wife by Tamima Anam. Um, this comes out in June as well. So I am gonna, try and wait a little bit before I read it just because I think it's probably more helpful if I'm like reviewing books around the time that they come out rather than it having to be like a book that doesn't come out for months correct me if I'm wrong kind of about like startup culture and feminism uh, I absolutely love this cover very excited about this I've got 10 minutes 38 seconds in this strange world by Alicia Shafak. I really really need to read this one soon I've had it for like a long time and it's one of my five star predictions so i did a video ages ago that was like my five star predictions and i want to do like a roundup of that if they were five stars but there's a few books including this one that i still haven't read so i do need to pick this up if only just to complete my task but i actually think i'm gonna really love this then on earth with briefly gorgeous which i got for my birthday and then in my like very small purple section i have the heart goes last by margaret atwood which again kindly sent to me by kieran from katie books i really do want to read this i want to read more margaret atwood definitely and this one sounds interesting because it sounds kind of different from like her more historical ones it's a bit of a dystopian i think basically about you live in like a utopia half the time and a dystopia half the time it sounds really interesting i do want to get to this and then i have a little muriel spark a far cry from kensington and i just love collecting these little books sometimes it's just what i'm in the mood for like you can read them in an evening like in the time it would take you to watch a film basically and yeah i think they're really cute okay down to the next shelf now that's a little bit more comfortable um i've got detransition baby which i just got for my birthday then i have to all the boys i've loved before by jenny Han. so i really don't read like much slash any ya but i just absolutely love these films the third one just recently came out i was talking about it in a vlog and i just think they're so gorgeous the first one especially is like such a comfort for me to watch i think they're really really sweet and i actually picked this up for I did a video a while ago, a reading vlog that was like reading the books of some of my favorite films and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really fun. So I thought about doing another one, which is why I picked up this, but that never happened or is yet to happen. Let me know if you'd be interested. So I still have this on my TBR. Then I have another Muriel Spark. This is Memento Mori. I actually started this one a while ago, last year maybe. Um, or the year before but I found it it's very much about death and it is kind of funny and irreverent but I just wasn't really in the mood to read about death so I ended up putting it down but I do actually really want to pick it up again so then I have Purple Hibiscus by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie so I got this book as a present and it was such a great present because I read her other two novels last year and loved them but since receiving this I have been made aware of the really transphobic things that Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie has said and done and I think if I did read it I probably just wouldn't review it for me I feel like just not talking about it but I'm not going to pretend it's not on my shelves sorry my camera just died 
Then I have Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeleine Tien. This was shortlisted for the booker. It looks at the Tiananmen Square protests, something that I really want to learn more about. Again, I've had this for a while. I think maybe because it's like slightly on the long side, but not like a big book that I'm like challenging myself to read. Maybe it's gone a bit under the radar, but yeah, I do want to get to this, definitely. I have The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. This would work for my Pulitzer Prize project. I love The Nickel Boys so much. I'm actually considering doing a reading vlog that's like reading a second book from an author that I've given five stars to one book, if that makes sense. Uh, so this would probably be a good one for that because I love The Nickel Boys so much and I know people say The Underground Railroad is like equally brilliant. Then I have Middle England and oh, I just don't know if I'll ever read this. I bought this to go on holiday in 2019. I didn't realize it was part of like the Rotters Club series, which I hadn't previously read, but people say like you can read it as a standalone. But I took it on holiday. Alex read it before me and was like, mm, it's not very good. And it just put me off it. But then post that, it was like shortlisted for the Costa Prize. We even like won one of the categories. So maybe I should pick it up, but it is really hard when you're like on holiday with someone and they're like, yeah, I wouldn't bother with it. And I'm like, do I trust you? Obviously you have good taste in women, but like, do you have good taste in books? Who knows? And I have, this is The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Murakami, which I talked about in my big books video. Then I have Exit Management by Naomi Booth. Why haven't I read this yet? I was so excited for this book. I put it in my like anticipated releases. Then I put it in a tag video where it's like three books you have to read before the end of the year. Why? Why haven't I read it yet? I really like Naomi Booth. She's a Northern author. It sounds so interesting and like thrillery, but political about like two people who move in with an older man, um, kind of free to get good housing, but they have to look after him. And I think, like I say, yeah, it's quite political. It looks at like the housing crisis and class. I really, really do want to read this. And yet, I have not yet. Also, I love how I'm like, I really, really want to read it as if this isn't my TBR shelf. Then we've got Open Water and You People, which I got for my birthday. The Overstory, which I talk about in my big books video. Then we have The Long Song by Andrea Levy. I haven't read any Andrea Levy. I'm not sure, is this the best place to start or maybe Small Islands better? I don't know. I think Simon's a massive Andrea Levy fan, as far as I remember. So Simon, if you're watching, what should I read first? I think I actually stole this like from my mum when I moved into this flat. So I was like, ooh, you've been on my TBR. I don't actually own you. So it's pretty bad that I still haven't read it. Next up is another proof. This is King of Rabbits by Carla Neblett. So this comes out in March. This is a proof very kindly sent to me by the publisher and it sounds really interesting. Um, I'll actually link Anna from Let's Talk About Books Babies video that she did with Tom, her boyfriend recently, because this book's set in Somerset and Tom's from Somerset. And he talks about how it's one of his most anticipated reads. So you might find that interesting. This is about Kai, who's a young mixed race boy growing up in rural Somerset. And I am really interested to read from that perspective. I think especially because although I don't live in Somerset, I do live in an area that isn't particularly diverse. Northeast of England has a very high proportion of white people. And so I think that there'll be elements of this and kind of in understanding what it's like for Kai would be kind of relevant, I suppose, to the place that I live and what it might be like for similar people living in the northeast i think it's really interesting then i have scenes of a graphic nature which i got for my birthday love orange which is another one that i've been so excited for so i basically got this proof in march left it in the office back when we went into the office didn't realize how long we'd be out of the office for covid managed to get it back in october why haven't i read it yet about a weird house that has like cutting edge technology and a mother who's writing to a prisoner and not telling her husband it sounds great and actually the other day I couldn't decide what to read and so I said to Alex, pick a random book off these shelves, like what do you think I should read? And he chose this one, so maybe that's a sign from God that I need to pick this one up soon. Then I have this book called Alonement, which is a non-fiction book that I talked about in a vlog that I got uh, via work. This is another proof that was kindly sent to me by Bloomsbury called Bright Burning Things. This sounds really interesting. It's about a single mother who is really suffering, I think with her mental health and the strain it's putting on her ability to care for her son. I was sent this book in December and the reason I haven't picked it up is just because I haven't been in the frame of mind where I wanna read something that rough. You know, I think all of us are a bit like fragile at the minute, even if you're very lucky and very privileged in how lockdown's been for you, it is still kind of a weird time and this just sounded so heavy. I think that's why I haven't picked it up yet. Then I have Her Body and Other Parties, which is a short story collection that I recently talked about in one of my like, what book should I read this month videos. And I heard a lot of mixed things about that, but I'm still really excited for it. I don't love short stories always. And so if there's a set that appeals to me, like I do really want to pick it up soon. Then I have this thriller called These Women by Ivy Pakoda. 
which I'd never heard of. Someone I work with was like, I read it, I think you really like it, I'm gonna send it to you, I need to read it. I think it's about like a group of sex workers um, living in like a community, I believe, from my limited knowledge and what it says on the back, but obviously it comes very highly recommended. As I've been saying recently, I just haven't been picking up too many thrillers recently, but I do wanna change that, so interested to have this one. Then I have the Makioka Sisters, which I talked about in my big books video. I have When We Were Orphans by Kazuo Ishiguro. I think I'm gonna pick this up really soon, like this month or maybe next month, because Ishiguro's new book, Clara and the Sun, is coming out, and it's just, with everyone talking about him, it's really put me in the mood to read Ishiguro. He's one of my favorite authors. I've given everything I've ever read by him five stars. This one sounds so up my street because it's set in England in the 1930s and it follows a detective who is trying to understand what happened to his parents in China. And I really like that trope of like detective haunted by his own past. And I think Ishiguro is just so masterful at doing like whatever genre or kind of subgenre he chooses because he writes in such a variety really well. And I think his approach to this will be amazing so yeah this one you'll hopefully be seeing soon and i have soledad by angie cruz which i got for my birthday two virago modern classics we have the scapegoat by daphne du maurier again desperate to read this one of my favorite authors it just never feels like the right time to commit to what could be like a new favorite book because i love her kind of like thrillery books but i do want to read it obviously and then i also have another kind of classic which is their eyes Are watching god by zora neale hurston I'm definitely going to read this soon because me and Simon from Savage Reads were talking about it. He ended up reading it and absolutely loving it. And there was all these like weird signs from the universe that we should be reading it. So again, we'll hopefully be picking this one up like very soon. I have Jacob Ross, Black Rain Falling. Talked about this in my What Should I Read Next video. It's thriller. I love his thrillers. I love the first one in this series. This is a definite. I read the last one in like a heat wave and because it's set in the Caribbean, it was like the perfect time. So I think I'm gonna save this one for when the weather's getting a bit warmer, if I can resist it. I have The Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin. Another one where I'm like, will I ever read you? Picked it up secondhand, thought it was The Incendiaries by R. O. Kwan, which I have since read and not liked. Um, this is about like a group of siblings who I think find out like the exact day they're gonna die. I'm just not sure, I haven't really heard. I've heard like people talk about it, but I've never seen anyone who I particularly have a similar taste to, like, love it. I think um, Emma from Drinking by Myself might be reading it. I think I saw it on one of her TBRs or something, so maybe I'll wait until she's read it and see what she thinks of it, because often we do have quite a similar taste. And then I have Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. I picked this up because it was going to be our book club book for January, like the little book hotties book club that me, CJ, J, KD, and Hannah do. And we ended up not reading it in January because for various kind of personal reasons with different people, no one was in the mood for like a really heavy book, which I think this is. However, I really liked The Bluest Eye, which was my first Morrison that I read last year. And I know a lot of people like think this one is absolutely amazing. So I haven't picked it up by myself yet because we are rearranging the book club and we are definitely gonna read this one together in the next couple of months. So that's why I haven't read it yet. Okay, and then we're on to the final shelf. This shelf will definitely be the hardest to see because it's all like the black books, which does also kind of mean that there'll be a lot of thrillers. For example, The Good Daughter, a thriller by Karen Slaughter, which I talked about in my big books video. I have I See You by Claire McIntosh. Again, pick this up secondhand because I've heard really good things about her, but everyone says the best one by far is I Let You Go, I think it's called. And so it's just that thing again of like, if there's any reason for me to feel like I shouldn't read a book or I should read another one first when I have this many books on my TBR. And finite amount of time, it often means that I then don't pick them up. But I don't know, it's about Stalker actually, and I do love Stalker thrillers, so perhaps. Malmoth by Sarah Perry, another one that has been out for ages. Everyone's kind of read, it feels like. I also haven't read The Essex Serpent. I do want to read this because it sounds really gothic and creepy, but again, like Pine, I think it's one that I hauled last autumn, then didn't read, and I'm gonna save for this autumn. The Devil in the Dark Water by Stuart Turton, talked about in my big books video. This is Three Days and a Life. Do I do Pierre Le Maitre and sound like pretentious, or do I do Pierre Le Maitre and sound ignorant? This is a thriller um, I read a randomly bought by my father, thriller of his called Blood Wedding a few years ago and thought it was just really fun and really twisty and it was set in front and I love French books and I particularly love like French noir kind of things so I picked this up second hand and if I'm being brutally honest I feel like the reason I'm not picking it up is because I find this cover so ugly and so my eyes aren't really like drawn to it on the shelf also my thriller tastes probably have changed in the couple of years since 
I read the other one, but it was really fun. And I think April from Getting Hugger With It has read not this one, I don't think, but maybe also Blood Wedding and really liked it. And she said she wanted to read more by him. So I, I should give this a chance and not judge a book by its shiny, oddly constructed cover. I have Nothing Can Hurt You by Nicola May Goldberg, which I got for my birthday. Just smashing holes in my bookshelf. I have Hollow in the Land by James Clark, which is another proof that I've had for like literal years. It's set in the north of England, he's a northern writer. It kind of makes me think of, by the description, Reservoir 13 by John McGregor, which I really liked in that it's kind of like interweaving stories about people in this kind of dead end Lancashire town. I think maybe it sounds a little bit, not depressing, but it sounds quite like gritty, which I do like. I'm not sure why I haven't picked this up in all honesty. I would love to hear if anyone's read it because I've never heard anyone talk about it before. It's published by Serpent's Tale. It came out April, 2020. I got this at a proof party that we did with work in 2019. So I've had it for ages, um, but yeah, let me know if you've read it. So this is still a side by Knan Jones. Uh, Kieran from Katie Book sent me this. It's super tiny, sounds really interesting, like dystopian, I think like water is commodified. This I really should read because obviously Kieran very kindly thought I would like it. Um, and yeah, it's very slim, so I should be able to read it quite quickly. Then I have An Ordinary Wonder by Bookie Papignon, which is coming out in March and I really want to read it before it comes out because I think I'm going to love it and I really want to be able to recommend it to people. It's about an intersex person called Otto who's born in Nigeria and they're also a twin, love twin books, and um, moving to the UK and to America for school and university sounds very like Freshwater by Akweke Mezi, which is one of my favourite books. So yeah, definitely reading this soon. Miracle Creek by Angie Kim, which I talked about in a video recently because Hannah and me did a book swap and I got this. I love a courtroom drama. I think this sounds really interesting. A lot of people have told me it's really good. So excited about this. An Anne Cleves Shetland book, one of my favorite crime series, which I got very cheap secondhand. And this is the next one I need to read. Got The Vegetarian by Hang Hang for my birthday. Black Leopard, Red Wolf, I talked about in my big books video. The Push I got for my birthday. Mary Lou is Everywhere by Sarah Elaine Smith. I've never heard anyone talk about this book. I picked it up just free at work because it sounded really interesting. It was about how a mixed race popular girl goes missing, but how they don't really search for her as hard as if she was a white girl. And I was like, that's such an interesting premise for a thriller. It's so true, like historically speaking, if you look at the way that missing children who are non-white are handled compared to basically rich white kids or to white kids, it's actually deeply disturbing. Um, but this is written by a white author, which I didn't know when I picked it up. I'm not saying I wouldn't still read it, but I think I picked it up thinking it was kind of very much from that, the perspective of that community or from a mixed race person and then it wasn't. But yeah, I am still really interested to read a thriller set in like rural America. I got Earthlings for my birthday, the treatment I talked about in my big books video, Boy Parts by Liza Clark, desperate to read this, another Northern author, Jalen from The Brother Bookcase loved it. It's weird, it's dark. I actually just need to pick this up like so, so soon because I bought it before Christmas and I've been really excited and just like putting it off. This is a thriller that I got in a like proof party publisher showcase thing recently set in Antarctica, like a locked room thriller, which sounds quite interesting. I don't like love books set in cold, scary places, but good to have as an option. Then we have Middle March, which I talked about in my big books video. The Road by Cormac McCarthy, which Kieran sent me and I just don't want to read. It's my dad's favorite book. I think it sounds awful, depressing, scary, just not what I want to read at all. But Kieran sent it to me because he's a great guy. Uh, no, I don't know. Will I ever read this? Who can say? A Brief History of Seven Killings. I talked about in my big books video. And then I have Look Every Door by Riley Sager, which I talked about recently. It was in one of my You Choose My Next Read videos. And I think that month I ended up reading like almost all of the books that I talked about, even though I only asked for you to choose one. But this was one that I didn't and do really want to pick it up soon. Like I say, I'm on a bit of a thriller hype at the minute, so hopefully we'll get to it. And then finally, we have Children of Jocosta by Natalie Haynes, which doesn't really fit anywhere. And I think I might unhaul this because I've had it for almost four years. I picked this book up from work on my first day of work, 27th of March, 2017, and I haven't read it. Everyone always says that A Thousand Ships is way better than this. I do like classics, but again, if someone's telling me that a different book's better, it makes me not wanna pick this up. So what do you think? Should I unhaul this? Okay, well, they are all the books on my physical TBR. I hope you enjoyed this. Please do let me know if you've read any of these books, because as you can tell, I find it difficult to choose what to read. and knowledge is power you know obviously i'd love you to subscribe my instagram and my story graph are linked down below and i'll see you in my next one bye